Mm, testing one, two, three. I am audioed. And now let's see if we can get some video going. There we go. It's awesome. All right. Hello and welcome to the stream. Um, today we actually, I had a lot of jokes for this and I just, none of them really seemed funny. I mean, I know none of my jokes are funny, period, but even to me, these didn't seem funny. So I'm just going to go through, we're going to do a lot of good stuff today, I think. Um, and that might be a lie, but I'm going to at least give it a shot. Um, so last time we got stuck up on uh, plotting the positions of planets because we, I became really obsessed with, you know, are we going to print this the right way? Should we print it in a format that's compatible with Horizon so other people can use it? Blah, blah, blah. And of course, we never got it done. That is uh, known as um, obsessive compulsive, but also I'm looking for the things that rhyme that say um, inaction, traction, nope. It's, um, it's uh, anal analysis paralysis. Okay, so today we're just gonna um, just gonna go ahead and whip that one out uh, any way we want, which is probably how programming should be. Um, and then we're gonna do a little something a little bit interesting. Uh, the image we're gonna create is gonna be uh, for each planet will be sixteen three eight four by sixteen three eight four. I think that's what I have it set to. But the question is, how big could we make the image? Uh, could we make it bigger than that? I mean, there are limits to what um, image magic will support. I'm using Fly, which is actually written by um, not, not part of Image Magic, actually, which, which is interesting. It's actually a very useful program for something um, that I don't think Image Magic has. Uh, of course, it, you could just use, a, you could write a program in libgd to do the same thing, and I believe Fly is, in fact, written in libdg, gd. In fact, I think it even says, so. oh, 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 oh. Uh, and it does not. Wow, this guy doesn't even take credit for it. He's a wonderful person, but oh, there it is. Uh, Martin Gleason, and this is basically just a uh, libgd wrapper, but it's really, really very useful. Um, so Fly might be able to do a little bit higher than that, but but ultimately, um, th we're not going to really want to show people images that are uh, really super huge at once because it's going to probably not really work that well for them. So we're going to use something like Leaflet to break them up to uh, show them in, as tiles. What's really kind of interesting here, though, is um, if you actually create the image in tiles, you're going to have a problem with if one tile writes a word that would go over into the next tile, but it can't because you're only rendering one tile at a time. Um, so that'll break words that go across one tile and into a second tile. One, there's probably several ways to fix this, a really bizarre way that only works because we're using um, a mostly black background is we can actually make the, um, the tile backgrounds transparent and then we could take the tile that we're rendering and merge it with the four surrounding or I guess eight surrounding tiles. I don't think the other, um, the corners will ever come into play. And then basically then recrop. So, you know, include everybody, merge the transparencies, recrop, and now you'll have the extra word sort of, sort of coming uh, over into the, uh, from the other image and they'll stay there because we, we overlaid the images. Um, that does make it harder because it means for each tile that you're going to create, you actually have to create, you know, overlay eight or four or five, they get five or nine tiles and then uh, crop, which is much harder than just cropping. Uh, but that's, that's again, something we're going to be uh, seeing. And by the way, the, um, the idea of having super, um, super large images is not really a new concept. Um, I mean, yes, we've had gigapixel, terapixel images, but really, if you think about it, OpenStreetMaps and Google Maps, uh, when you get right down to it, they are freaking huge. They're essentially freaking huge images. Um, and I was going to work out how big they are. Um, I mean, you know, if you're at the zoom level 24 and each, you still have uh, eight bits for the eight, you know, 256 by 256, uh, that's going to be uh, zoom, you know, two to the 64th uh, pixels total. Um, I don't even know if that can be rendered. I think it can be. I, I don't think two to the 64th is too large to be rendered. Um, but it's a lot, it's a lot of pixels. Um, and now, uh, so maybe we'll do that later. Okay. And then, uh, now I've created a video that basically shows the first billion digits of pi by showing them very, you know, a bunch of digits very, very quickly every 24th of a second, which is the frame rate and, and just going over them, but it's, they're really hard to see. So the question is, could we use a, um, did I say a list of primes? I probably meant the digits of pi. Hopefully that's what I said. 
The question is, though, could we use an image that's 32768 squared, which I think, unless I've biffed it, is close to a billion? I actually think it might be more than a billion. Uh, yeah, it's just over a billion. Uh, and then basically um, use different colors for the 10 digits. Uh, and, you know, we, if we could convert to hex, we could maybe, you know, use 16 colors. Got to be a little bit careful because there's only so many really distinguishable colors that people can see. Um, and and, and there's, there's something called the Kelly colors, and we'll look into that, that says, you know, we want to make these uh, colors distinct enough that, uh, you know, we, it, they're not just differentiable to, to computers, but also differentiable to humans. And then for prime numbers, of course, if we created an image that basically uh, did a little dot for every, um, uh, did a little dot for whether something was prime or not, uh, we would have a very empty looking image because, of course, all even numbers are not prime, uh, except two, of course. Uh, all multiples of three, except three itself, are not prime, so on and so forth. So what we want to do is we want to, first of all, have each pixel represent multiple primes, but we also want to, we'd also don't necessarily want to, you know, um, even then, listing every prime would be, there'd be a lot of times when the, we'd be unusing data because, you know, the evens, the multiples of three, five, and so on. So one thing we could do is try to group them in the 30s and just say, of the possible, um, if, if you take a number mod 30 and it's prime, it, it has to be one of a, a several values. It can't be just any number at all. For example, uh, if you take a number mod 30 and it's five, uh, it's going to be divisible by 5 because 30 is divisible by 5, and when you add something, and when you add 5 to it, it's still divisible by 5. Um, so that is uh, that is uh, one way to do that. Um, I guess in theory we could do the sieve of Erythosthenes. Um, I haven't thought about that, actually. That could be very interesting. Um, but again, again, the, the idea here is we probably need to group the numbers together, plus that allows us to use colors instead of... Uh, single black and white pixels, we can use colors to represent the primes. And then, if we get through all that, which we won't, I mean, we're probably not even going to get through, like where it says stuff, we're probably not going to get through that even, just the word. Um, and then we might start looking at um, how to build a sundial if you have a, a vertical gnomon. A gnomon is not, uh, not a gnome who thinks he's a man, it's a vertical stick in the ground. Uh, because that will not actually point, that, that has some properties that don't point directly to the hours. Um, and that's in order to answer this question. And, and at least this question is related, and oh shit. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. This is something that will, can almost never happen because um, I'm already 10 minutes into discussing it, and we haven't done it, and we haven't even started doing anything. Um, the question is, could you create a Z Unix time zone, and you can create Unix time zones, uh, that actually matches the sun's angle, the sun's azimuth, uh, or something interesting like that. For example, it's always 6 a.m. when the sun rises, 6 p.m. when the sun sets, and obviously the time goes slower or faster um, depending on whether it's night or day and, you know, what season it is. And, and, I, and I kind of looked into this a little bit earlier, a long time ago, and it's actually in my Git. Um, the answer is you can create your own Unix time zones. You can even give the days names if you want, different names. But I don't think you can do things like, I should be asking that question here. Uh, oh yeah, here it is. Uh, but, but unfortunately, and then, you know, could you actually create a Hebrew calendar or a Jewish calendar? Uh, I guess Hebrew and Jewish are the same thing. I probably meant to say Hebrew, Jewish, Muslim calendar. Um, just using these things and um, just using a Unix time zone, which I don't know how useful it would be. It's, um, it has this sort of bizarreness of trying to force, um, force a format into another format. And there are many, many other options than Unix time zones. You could easily create a Muslim clock or a, a Jewish or Hebrew clock or any calendar clock without having to go all the way into Unix time zones. Uh, the only nice thing is that if you, if you use Unix time zones, um, you can, um, you can, um, actually, sorry, I just thought of something. Um, any tool that works with Unix time zones will now work with these. Um, but the question is, can you have six day weeks in Unix time zones? I don't think you can. Uh, there might be a way around that by skipping, but eight day weeks might be a real problem. And that's what I'm saying here is, could you have a February with 30 days? If, for example, you were creating a solar calendar where every month had 30 days, and we, we fudge the five extra days somehow. 
um, 5.2425, whatever, you know, 2427, whatever the solar year is. Um, and I don't think that Unix time zones are powerful enough to do that. It did occur to me just now, you could create your own, you could override the basic uh, time functions uh, and, and by creating your own time functions, which I've done before, and I think it might actually be in uh, my git somewhere, uh, using ld preload, which means you load some libraries uh, that, that will override the system libraries. This is very ugly. Um, this is probably worse, as Douglas Adams likes to say, it's probably easier just not to do it than to do it using LD preload. Okay. So oddly enough, the first thing we're going to do is kind of works with this right here. Um, BC any dump, blah, 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 but except we're going to call it BC any dump two, and we are going to change it a little bit to make life easier for us. Um, and we're not going to try to be super cool or anything like we were last time. So let's see if we can get to any dump two, which is a, oh, hello. Where did BC any dump two go? Hang on. Maybe I called it something else. Like I shouldn't be doing this. BC, oh, BC ecliptic map two. That's the pro function. Uh, hang on. We might have issues. Um, that's the pro thing that's going to consume the output of BC. Well, apparently I didn't do it yesterday. Um, I was going to copy BC any dump and then tweak that because I don't like the way its output is going. Um, but I apparently never got back. Well, I, I do remember I didn't change it. If I did copy it, I didn't change it. Um, uh, let's see. So the only thing I really don't... I mean, there, there's two problems with this. One is... Um, every time I change the format, it's going to break other stuff. So it'd be nice to have a, like a, I do have a header line here, actually. I, I think I do print out a header line. Um, but it would be nice to, to actually sort of, um, to actually have a header line, like this is, um, do I print out a header line? Hang on. And it can be run with no options because this is another bad thing, by the way. It should, it should never, it shouldn't run with no options because it just assumes options, and it tells you that it does that up here. Oh yeah, it does. So format equals ephemeris time, unix time, start date, three, three different ways of giving you the time, write ascension and declination, which, which could be useful if, if, um, if you're you know, parsing this data in some way, but it's not really useful in generically. Uh, so the nice thing I think we talked about at one point would be to try to create a format string that says, here's what I want out of this. Um, and the really bad thing about that is it would take forever, and um, that would be a very that would be kind of a complication uh, that we really didn't want. Um, and now, as you can tell from from my hesitation, I'm actually curious to see if we could do it. Um, I mean, it would just be minus minus format equal, and then the string, which would be a string of letters. Uh, no, we couldn't even do that. We would probably have to make it commas because. I don't think well, 26 values is not going to be enough. We could print more than 26 different values. Um, oh shit! I have I have broken myself now. Um, fuck! 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 Okay, so that would be kind of cool, actually. Um, if we could do that. Um, genericize the format of the string and let people just sort of decide what they want. Um, crap. Now, I think one issue here would be right now we're doing some of this with options. For example, we are saying uh, the frame is given by options, so we can't, we don't actually compute. Um, we could though. Um, we don't actually compute the positions in all four frames plus alt as, which is a special frame. Uh, we only compute it in, in one frame, the one that they want. So, so to generalize that would be kind of, kind of ugly. Um, actually it wouldn't be that ugly. We could easily compute it in all four frames and then just give them the ones they want or even limit the computations to the ones they want. Uh, so no, it wouldn't be difficult at all. It's, that was a total bullshit move on my part. Um, uh, 
that was a bullshit thing to say on my part. Okay. So now... I guess the first thing we could have it do is... Compute in every frame. Because I'm kind of curious what the difference is between J2000 and Ikik date. Uh, an ecliptic J2000 and eclipse date, because those are basically the procession we've experienced in the last 20 years. Altaz might be an outlier here. Altaz might be, um, well, actually, we could assume Altaz of zero, zero, which isn't helpful because that's not a very interesting point on the planet. But, okay, so we could do that. And, well, you know what, let's, let's do that as sort of our compromise. Um, let's compute every fucking thing in the world um, as our compromise, and then uh, just take what we need for the ecliptic dump. So let's go ahead and do BC, any dump 2, the adventure continues. Um, I, hate, I hate that naming convention. If someone has an idea for a better naming convention when I create a copy of something, um, in order to modify it, uh, please, please let me know. I would be very appreciative. So, da -da -da -da, we're going to go ahead and get rid of the um, little examples that we had, because we, we actually know what we're doing now. I mean, we don't, but we figured it out once, and the copy version doesn't really need... Um, doesn't really need the, uh, the comment, the, the instructions again. Okay, so the thing we're probably going to lose here is frame, but let's see what we're doing here. Okay, so this isn't quite... This is going to be a little bit trickier than we thought, but let's see here. It is Pomodoro time, but it's the first one, so I'm going to skip it. Uh, after this, I will I will go Pomodoro myself, whatever that means. Okay, yeah, so this is... This is where we need to do our little for loop here. And... Now, okay. Well, I think we can. I think we can. I think we can save this. Let's go ahead and create an array, which I. So we can create it inside of main. I think. I think we can do that. Um. Oh, this should really be. I'm not going to invent it. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure this isn't going to actually work, but I mean, in theory, it could work. Um, um, la, 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 la. Where did I list my frames? There we are. Um, it doesn't have to be in the same order, obviously, but I'm going to do it that way. And I'm kind of tempted right here just to check to see if, uh, this works. Because I get the feeling it won't. I mean... <sighs> Will it compile excess elements in... Oh, yeah. Okay, that one, that one's on me. Well, it actually compiled, which is more than most of my programs do, so I'm happy. Wow, that did work. Okay, solid. So yes, we can do an array. We can do an array of frames, and then I think we can just actually surround this. Uh, we're gonna be a little bit careful because we are potentially. Uh, no, we might be okay. We might be potentially reusing the same array, which is icky. Mm. Although, because we're... Uh, I want to say that's not going to happen, but of course, it is going to happen. Uh, int... Um, should I... I always don't remember what, whether I should or shouldn't do the... Create the, in, the integer inside the... Create the, the loop variable. Okay. For int j equals 
j less than I forget how to do size of it's a macro I think but um, I know I know it's five I know it's five but there's a way to um oh man there's a way to get the length of an array without having to uh, know it in advance. Um, and it uses uh, l uh, uses size of, but remember, these are actually pointers. These are not uh, pointers characters. They're not actually the whole string. The string is where the pointer leads to. Um, okay, let's just see if I can find my size of in any of the things I've already done. Um... And there it is. Ah. Now it's char star. Char star is a pointer, right? So let's see. Uh, I think I can fake this by looking at size of planets and just, I, I'm almost sure this is going to be like eight or four or something. One of those, one of those number things. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, hang on. I probably want to do it after I define. Okay. I probably have broken it, but you know, that's... Kind of, uh, kind of what I do. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but argument is long unsigned. I actually know how to do this. This is like LL or something. I wonder if I can get away with float. I think it'll do that conversion kind of naturally. Fuck you. Okay. I've, I've actually done this before. Um... So I need to find something that has long unsigned int in it, uh, or long int. I think I can get it from there. Okay, so LLD is, um, I think LLD is long unsigned int or something. I forget what long signed int is. I, I'm probably going to need to look that one up. Um, Printf long signed int. I think it's percent ll something. Um. Oh, hang on. This might not be a long. long this might be just a regular everyday long, not a long long. Um. Oh. That's kind of a badness that it doesn't try to remake. BC any dump two, unless I change it, but I guess long unsigned. Okay, long unsigned it is just LU. That's pretty pathetic, actually. There's actually even a longer one. Dun -dun. Okay, 40. So that's going to be, as I guessed, 8 is the length of the pointer, uh, a char star. And by the way, I'm doing the exact opposite of what I promised, which was trying to make this really fast. Okay. Uh, and now, I should be able to do... Oh, ho. I always forget which way direction Surakopi goes in. Fortunately, destination. So the destination is going to be frame. The um, now, God willing, and and he's not. This is going to be print time. <laughs> Means it is time to print, which is different. Okay. Um, Obviously, we cannot quite do this. Actually, we could. Oh, 
Oh wow. Uh, let's go ahead and run this, and it's gonna it's gonna we're not it's not gonna do what we want, but it's gonna be doing something very interesting. Unless, of course. Did I really say size of eye planets when I met frames? Wow. I'm losing my mind. But that's been happening for a long time. Hasn't stopped me yet. Okay. So what we're kind of not seeing here is this: these four lines are actually from one... Well, actually, we are seeing it. From one time... Oh, actually, five lines are from one actual... Um, are from one actual position. I mean, one one actual um, one actual position of the planet. We're just printing it in five different ways. I think we can get around that. So now I want to be a little bit careful here, and I'm going to really f things up by printing with spaces, even though I know that's wrong. I know it's wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to print the frame, and then we're going to print. I guess we get RA and deck each time, so that's what we're going to print. So that's going to be frame. And I guess we are going to convert it because we're just we're just going crazy today. Notice here we're not going to print a new line. So after this, however, we are going to print a new line. So if this works correctly, which it won't, um, we should get a very long lines here that give us all the data on something. Um, yeah, that's actually what I wanted. Um, and by the way, this is the cool thing here is if you want, I mean, obviously we're going to be parsing this with Perl. I guess the one thing we didn't print, which I should be printing, is the... Um, the ID of the thing that's being uh, that's being positioned here, and let's see, start and we're printing the time, so oh, we're not printing the time actually. Um, <laughs> we're not printing the time at all. Okay, we need to print the time, and we also need to print the thingy that is um, that that we're observing. We don't need to print the observer because I think we're we're fixing that to be Earth. I'm sure. Are we? Yeah, we are. Okay. So here's what we need to do before the for loop. Uh, we need to print out print out. No, actually, it needs to be printed on each line, doesn't it? Oh, right, right. Yeah, sorry, one line. Print out time and ID uh, at start of each line. So this would be printf um, integer. I think the time is a float. Let's see. And et is Unix to et. Okay, so i is given in Unix time, which is which is what I want. Um, and and I've got this backwards. Um, id i. Will that do it? And did I want to print something else at the end, or did I forget about that? Okay. Let's try this. If this works, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and gitify it, which I should have done before, but I didn't. Okay, so now we have uh, the plant, the moon. Oh, that's what we're looking at. Time. Coordinates in a bajillion different formats. Uh, not, not ideal, by the way. Um... But not fucking bad either, actually. Now, we could, in theory, put the coordinates in other f you know, times in other formats here, but I think this... This really kind of looks like the thing we, we want uh, to be able to... Pl we need to be able to plot. Uh, and th so this is what we can use. So I'm going to go ahead and definitely save this to be... I'm going to gitify this. Save it to git. Okay, now that it's magically off to get, of course, we will break it. Um, no, actually, I think we can actually use this now. Um, I don't really care for these parameters, but I don't think I care that I don't care. All right, so let's go ahead and... Um, actually... 
the way things are right now, we could feed this data almost directly into um, into BC Ecliptic Map 1, even, if we wanted to. Hang on. Um, we just need to... Let's see. The only thing we don't have really is the solar angle, which I'm intentionally not computing. So, so let's see how clever we can be. Um, oh, and that's another reason not to use commas is because Perl defaults to using spaces as, as its um, as its separator. The other problem we're going to have here is um, it's expecting its input in radian. So I'm going to go ahead and, and bring up the other one, uh, which is currently, I think, a, an exact copy of this one. And we'll make that little bit of a tweak here that it's going to take um, degrees and it's not going to take... Um, You see any dump two. All right, so what are we doing here? And this part just prints the map, which I actually kind of kind of want to just use that. That that should be like a fixed thing, and I think it is actually. Um, wow. It might oh, it might be a gift because of the way. Cool. Because uh, the blank ecliptic is actually pretty cool. It's a good thing to have. All right, let's do this. Wow. I'm guessing this is like a, oh, no. Okay. Oh, right, right. Okay. All right, I guess not. Um, I'll put that on my to-do list. Now, one bad thing I did is the ecliptic is not actually aligned to um, to zero zero because I decided I didn't want it that way, um, because it kind of cuts off Virgo. So there's going to be a kind of a little bit of a a glitch here. Okay, so this is all good. This is all good. Um, and the only thing I really need to change, because I can fake up a solar angle of zero or whatever the hell it is, um, is to kind of not convert the c parameters. Oh, this is, sorry, again. See, this is really should be a separate subroutine, because it just creates the... Uh, the blank map. Okay, here we go. So now, blah, blah, blah. And so this is where the diff is going to tell us weird things are happening. We're not going to change radians to degrees because we're getting degrees. I think that is the only time... This doesn't matter because we're actually not going to be using Sangle anymore. Um... I'm tempted to remove any reference to S angle, but I'm not quite ready to do that. Okay. So, so this really I don't even know this is where I'm going with this, by the way. I don't even remember. Um, okay, so we're gonna print the NAF ID, which is the zeroth field. We're going to print the... Oh, crap. Is my time in... F what time am I using it in? For some reason, I'm using JD as my time, right? And Julian date. But... JD Phoenix. Okay. So this is no longer JD. Um, I have no idea what the hell this does. Substitute stars and... Oh, right, this changes it into engineering format. Uh, something we will not be needing for Unix. So my time is GM time of just JD, which is no longer JD, but, you know, is the Unix time. So that's fine. So we have... Um, I think I actually uh, got rid of the comments that tell what the input... what the expected input is. I am so awesome. 
Um, wait. Did I? I did. Okay. So the JD, or now the other thing, the ecliptic longitude, so the JD is this now. The ecliptic longitude, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I've got to use Eclipse J2000 because that's what the stars are in. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then it expects one more field that we're not going to be using anymore, but we need to print it anyway. Okay. Now. This is going to fail at a level that um, I can only dream of. Okay. I actually expected that. So we want Fly to do this in quiet mode and then display it. And this is little tiny dot there is the moon's position um, and it's only doing it every month because this is um, Because this is actually for planets, which don't... So I, I'm not crazy about... The moon is tiny. But I think, again, that is actually intended. Um, so I'm going to try to find the position of the moon in sort of a clever way. And God help us. Um, I'm going to actually... Oh, wow, three at once. Okay. So, um, I'm going to make the start and end times really close to each other. Pop it error time, and I'm going to take it back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. I'm going to just check. I don't think there's anyone in chat. Um, but I want to confirm that. Yay. It's just me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the... Um, okay. By the way, if anyone was wondering, um, we just apparently passed... Um, a Unix time that is a multiple of what appears to be either a million or ten million. Ten million. And ten million seconds is about a third of a year, so it's not really that exciting. We will be passing a... Um, we will be passing a Unix multiple that is a multiple of 100 million uh, on September 13th. And that is kind of rare. I mean, the next one after that's going to be uh, three years later. So, anyway, not exciting. I just did it because I'm very easily distracted. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to start time of. We'll go ahead and do it 
one this. And the end time is going to be just like um, 500 seconds later. And we're going to print it every second. So basically it's going to print the moon like in one-ish position. Let's see what this does. I, I, assuming that it actually works at all, which I don't think it will. May 20th. Yep, this was not exactly where I wanted to go with it. I guess I wanted to print a little bit more than just, but I guess that is technically um, technically correct. All right, so now where the frick, frick is the moon? Um, I know we can use Stellarium for this, and it's a great excuse, but I'm going to kind of nail this down. Something tells me this is not going to give me the information I want. I, I, I'm just hesitant. Um, and the moon was probably actually a bad idea. Wow, that's way too slow. Um, all right, screw that. So let's actually. look at the position of Mercury. So we're, we're going to leave the other things at default, but we're going to look at Mercury, which is ID 199, in case you didn't know. Okay, and this might be actually a little bit more useful to us. Okay, so there's Mercury. Why is it yellow? I don't know. Well, actually, I do know. Um, but I won't tell you. It's because of that solar thing right now that we're not doing. Um, so this appears to be... Wow, this appears to be, I wish I had a better, I, I, hang on, I think we can do this. Oh, that's El Nath, so this is like Taurus-ish to Gemini-ish. So now we can use a much easier way to find it using Wolfram Alpha, Mercury Position. In the constellation Taurus, yay. Now, of course, that, that doesn't really prove anything because it's a pretty big constellation. But now let's do this for... Oh, we probably should get rid of the uh, the huge image here. Yeah. Uh, let's do this for... Wait, what did I close if I didn't close this image? Shit. Do I have more than one of them up? Oh, wow. I am awesome. Now let's do it for Jupiter and see if we can get Jupiter to match the position. Uh, Jupiter by Jupiter, of course, I mean Venus. Okay, so Venus also appears to be in Taurus, but not too surprising, because remember, the Sun is also... Um, the sun, it has to remain close to the sun. So I'm guessing the sun is, like, near Taurus-ish. Um, Venus position. And, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it just hangs there forever. If this keeps up, I'm going to look, look to see if there's any, like, very um, network-intensive process that I have going, other than the one I'm using to talk to you, of course. Um, looks that we're doing okay here, so maybe that's just a... Oh, um, I have this set to caching, so if, if, it, if I accept an answer at one point, it'll... Okay. <laughs> um, let me try this again now. It's going to cache, but I can force it not to. Yay. Let's, let's see where the sun is. I'm guessing the sun is also in, in Taurus. I not, would not be surprised at all. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put that up there just for fun. Mine, not yours. Oh, am I not running screen? Wow. I keep forgetting. I have to restart screen every time. And that means I also lose my history. Eek. Okay. Any dump to ID equals 10. Pipe to BC. Ecliptic uh, map to. Pipe to fly quiet. Display the, and do the whole thing in the background. 
not bad actually. I didn't even have to. Interesting. Why is it red? I don't know. Let's see if we can see the sun in. Tor I think I actually do know. Uh, this is one there. That's Aldebaran. Where the frick is the sun? Here doesn't come the sun. Something's wrong. Um, I think the sun maybe hit a corner or something. Let me, let me try that again. Wow, that actually made my vision go kind of funky. Yeah, something's wrong with the sun. I mean, probably not the actual sun. Let's see if we can plot the solar system Berry Center. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of red here. Let me, let me make sure it's still working for frickin' Mercury and Venus. I mean, have I have I broken the redness somehow? Okay. Cool. For some reason, this is now going to be red, and I didn't do anything that would have changed it. All right, let's take a look here. Okay, okay. I don't actually know what any of these things do. Um, yeah, let's see. I get the feeling we got like just chopped on an edge or something. Like this stuff. I mean, really, it should never be necessary to print off the edge of the uh, off the edge of the grid here. And really, we should not be printing with um, with decimal values. All right, let's do this. Um, let's see if the first. 200 lines break it. Hang on. Okay, we appear to be having network issues. Let me check something real quick. I am still checking something, but I get the feeling that you guys can't hear me, so it's probably not that interesting. Um, no, maybe that did work. Okay, I know there's no one in chat, but uh, if there is someone in chat, which would be a direct contradiction of no one being in chat. Um, okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, let me see. I hate looking at my stream on my stream. Um, I also ha probably should be closing off these image magic windows. Okay, let's quickly look at my stream. On my stream, I'm sorry, I, I, I saw something that spooked me. I want to make sure that I'm still broadcasting live because no one cares. Um, even I don't really care that much. Um, let's see. Well, it does say I'm live. Uh, I'm not going to unmute. Well, I actually can't unmute because uh, this thing does not have um, sound on this uh, uh, how's my quality? It does not say what my quality is like. Okay. All right, that's enough of the infinite zoom. Let's go back to what I was doing. Um, yes. See if the first 200 lines break something. This time I'm not going to put it in the background because I actually do want to remember to kill it. Okay, so the first 200 lines break it. Nice. Do the first 100 lines break it? And I get the feeling the answer is going to be yes. I think I might have figured out why. Although, why this didn't already happen... Oh, shit. Was I feeding it to this? I might have been. So I might have been feeding it to the one that, that works. Oopsie. All right. Several reasons I just realized this isn't going to work. It's because the... Um, 
the data I read of, from the ecliptic longitude that I use to, um, to map stuff is also in radians, and I convert it to degrees. But of course now, wait. No, that should still work. Okay. All right, let's figure out what the hell's wrong. Um. Yeah, let's let's do this real quick. Uh, we can run it without any planet input. I mean, so this this is the beautiful. Um, yeah, it would have been nice to send it through fly. So this is the beautiful ecliptical map with nothing on it. La 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 la. Let's make sure that the second one can actually do that. Because if it can't, I've really effed things up. Oh, okay. It can. All right. And those images should actually be identical. In fact, uh, let's see. As part of my never doing what the hell I'm doing. I wonder if they're actually bite-wise identical. They might not be bite-wise identical, but um, that's interesting. Huh. Uh, let me file compare them and see. They might just... I think I want a verbose version of that, please. Okay, so you're telling me that two files that are different sizes are the same. I don't believe you. Oh shit, hang on. Either I'm not doing this wildcard correctly. Yeah, they're different. And usually I don't like XV, but in this case we just want to do a real quick comparison here. Oh, that's not going to be helpful. Alright, let's just do a display on both of them. I think they're the same though. One, two. Which looks better, one or two? One? No, enough. All right, so that part is working. So we're not, it's not hideously broken. Um, although now I'm wondering if the original one also tries to print a negative space, which, which would never actually happen. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, it's okay for the lines to go off the edge because it, it's trying to compute how to, to do a line. Um, that's actually, that's okay. The points should, however, never be going off the edge. And I think I do check for that. Okay, so ecliptic map 2 also, same thing. The lines are allowed to go off the edge. And actually, I'm curious about something now. Let's see. Now, instead of even looking at the uh, the gifts, let's just look at the thing, the instructions we give to fly. Um, they're not identical. That's interesting. Wow, it's not that interesting. Um, Interesting. All right, so they're, they're giving almost the same commands to fly. So I guess the next question is, now we've got to be a little bit careful here. Um, because we want to give them the same output, and uh, the defaults for BC and EDUMP2 are to use the current time, which changes second by second. On the off chance you didn't know how time worked. Okay, so now the one that works. Um, okay, these are just the fly commands. And I get the feeling there's gonna be like a very minor difference between them that's probably causing the issue. Okay, that I was wrong. So the first one, the good one. Really? Really, 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 
the good one has the good one is trying to set pixels at negative two uh, something is quite wrong here okay so the fact that the good one, the good one is trying to set pixels at negative 200,000 something. Re yep, there it is. That's just insane. Why would you do that? And why is it different? Okay, I mean, it looks like the very first thing it prints, so we can actually just look at... Okay. So really, it's the tenth line that we're starting to go weird. Okay, so this one prints at an insane location and works. This one prints at a non-insane location. It's still wrong. It doesn't work. So the question is, where the fick is this happening? And it's not one of these, because I'm, um, oh, and let's see what the color is here, 25500, that's red, that would explain why one of them works and one of them doesn't, um, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. Okay, we are almost back. We are back, but chat is being weird because it is telling me something is wrong. <sighs> Let me see if I can go directly to my um, dashboard and see what's going on here. It is, it is intended for mature audiences, but I'm not mature, so I can't click start watching. This is actually kind of nice, because now I can actually see, um, this is actually really nice. Uh, my bit rate looks okay. It says my stream quality is excellent. Um, so this is some pretty good shit here. 48 followers, which I don't care about. One viewer, which is me, by the way. Um, I like this. Okay. So apparently whatever the problem is, it's either just in chat or it's, well, yeah, or or it isn't in chat and just something weird's happening. Okay, so let's see where this red pixel is drawn. Hmm. Let's 
the ecliptic color. Hmm. <sighs> Well, that's a string, so that doesn't really, it's not what we're looking for. Uh, in fact, this is set pixel, which I don't really use that. Oh, here we are. I mean, that would literally be the only place. Let me comment that out and see what happens. I mean, I realize that's probably going to, like, end up not printing anything. Um, but let me try it anyway. And we'll call it map 2-2 just to be confusing. Um... This is one of those things where I actually get the feeling, I called it map to two. Um, and I get the feeling it's going to do exactly what it did before. Yep. All right. So question one is why is it printing, trying to print in the, um, oh, hang on. Why was I looking at, s I'm pretty sure set pixel was the one that was broken, right? Not one of those. Um, oh, right, because I changed it. Map 2. So it's one of, okay. So this still doesn't work, even though I've removed the, um, Even though I've removed the set pixel, which I thought was breaking it, but apparently it might be the F circle that's doing it. So, and I definitely get the feeling I'm not making my X and Y com computations correctly, which which is why I'm getting such a big difference from the program that works, but still sucks apparently because it still tries to print to negative space. It's just it's a big clusterfuck here. Okay. So the data input, so it prints the exact same thing, unless, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, oops, I effed it up, yeah. I should not have been doing this because I actually need to, I need to actually, because um, this gives out too much, inf I need to do that Perl thing that I did before. Yeah, fuck. Probably should have mention that, huh? And we decided it was dollar sign F0, dollar sign F1. Those are the two times that are okay. Um, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'm going to cut and paste this this time. Yep, I'm an idiot. But you knew that. Yep. So I was feeding it too much data and it was getting confused is what we're going to say. Obviously, it didn't really get, the things don't really get confused. Blah, blah, blah. OK, uh, so let's go ahead and write that down. And so now that I can send to, oh, and then I have to put a 0 in front of it, um, because I it wants, I think I can get away with that doing that, actually, to be honest. Um, So now this should give us the Mercury without any drama. And it does, except we already got Mercury earlier, so we're not crazy about it. Um, am I running more than one? No, OK, we're good. All right, so I think I said what we're going to do is the sun, and I totally biffed that. Let's see if we can get the sun going. This is where the red thing happened, and we got all sad. Um, yeah, the sun also in Taurus, and as you would expect, right on the ecliptic. That's because it's the freaking sun. That's what its job is. 
So let's do Mars real quickly. Oh, now, now I thought everything was being Taurus now. Okay, so according to this, Mars is in Aquarius here. Um, okay, we will need to make some changes to the labels that are printed out, but that's not a huge deal. But now let's make sure if Mars really is an Aquarius. If it is, I think we can... Yep. So all of that was just sort of to have some fun with it. Um, what we actually are looking for is a fairly long period of time. Um, in fact, we're going to try to go from the beginning of the century. I think I said this yesterday, getting deja vu. Um, yeah, let me actually do this. Definitely going to cut and paste this once we get this in. Uh, start's going to be this. End is going to be this. And I think we can do a delay of one day. Not even even that might be too too small actually. So let me go ahead and cut and paste this because this is kind of our our bread and butter here. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Yay. Um. Oh, cool. I think. Fly could not handle this. Yeah. But let's actually stop here. Okay. Okay. So apparently Fly does not like... The weird thing is Fly is actually pretty good about taking uh, a bajillion inputs. Um... But it doesn't like negative inputs. That's that thing that really does confuse it. So let's see if there's any negative numbers. Oh, no, that's okay for the lines. Okay. So now I want to look for negatives. To do that, you have to do this because it the dash could indicate to to f grep. Um, that it's an option, so you actually have to put in dash dash dash. So now let's see if there's any negative numbers you're trying to print out here. Oh no, shit! All right, so it's a segmentation fault because I'm giving it too much data. Um, never had that happen before, actually. But let's fix that by doing. Um, Let's fix that by, let's make it every 10 days, well that's going to be too, too little, but... Um, I think that's Mars? What the hell? That's terrible. That is just, just awful. No. That is not acceptable. Okay. So maybe we went a little bit too far. Let's do it for this year. Um, yeah. And in this case, we definitely can go by date. In fact, that might be too, too, in, that might be insufficient. Uh, might give us too few dots, but let's see. That looks pretty nice, actually.
Now, the reason it is not in red, as you might expect Mars to be, is because of the S angle thing that I'm going to fix here in just a sec. So Capricorns, we even see a little bit of little bit of retrograde coming in here. Okay. I actually didn't know Mars moved that much in a day. I'm kind of surprised. Okay. Let's fix... I do have the correct colors for... Yes, I want to quit, please. Okay. Um, let's make sure we're not running any more of those suckers. Uh, let's see if we can fix the... I'm pretty sure I didn't change much since... I don't think I changed anything. But let me just do a quick get diff here. I don't know if this is going to work here. Because uh, I don't want to break it more unless I know what I... Whoa! I did change it. Let me go ahead and push that to get real quick. Okay, it is being pushed, and now this should give me nothing because it's equivalent. Uh, except it's going to freeze. Okay, whatever. It's fine. Let's see if we can get rid of S angle, which is the sun's angle, which I use very cleverly in the sense of not cleverly, to show the, uh, the, the planet whited out a little bit. Uh, so we're not going to pull it in. Yeah, this is, this, is exact, this is literally what I'm doing. Wowzers. Um, I think I can just do this now, and I think that might be, the only, that might be it. That might literally be the only changes I need to make. Let's find out. Now, let's see if Mars is in. Hopefully, I gave it a c good color. Yeah, the red planet. There it is. Marching along. Cool. Very nice, as uh, what's his face would say, Borat would say. All right. Let's pump up the jam and see if we can go for 10 years. Okay. And I probably should write down what the limit is here. We can actually combine these images because um, we can overlay. But, oh, whoa. Yeah. So the problem we're getting here is actually we're not computing it. Uh, it's not actually clear. Images of it are running into each other for different years. So that's kind of not really great. We can mitigate that by doing it every hour, but now I get the feeling we're going to break um, fly again. Um, this, this will take 24 times as long, roughly speaking. There we go. You know, this might be another problem that we didn't want to actually deal with, which is um, even when they're, they're, they're not really connected, they're just being drawn very frequently, it's kind of hard to tell which, which one is, which path we're on. Because, like, we're on this path here. Hmm. So there's quite a quite a bit of work to do here. Um, what the hell was I doing? Oh, I was panning from here. That's why. Um, so one way to do this would be to basically have different colors for each year, which means we wouldn't make Mars red all the time. But you know. Um, that's probably okay. Because yeah, this is really quite ugly. And the other thing is we probably want to draw lines between the positions. We don't want to just sort of rely on the fact that we're... Yeah, ugh, ugh. So Mars apparently really likes the goat's butt. The Capricornus's butt there. 
And actually, it's a sea goat, by the way, even though H.A. Ray draws it as a goat. So, it's really into the goat poop right there. Um, but this is not super helpful. Um, it's interesting, though. And I did say I was going to basically... Um, this does work, and that is actually important. Because it does show that, you know... Um, It does show that we can do hourly plots and still actually get uh, a fairly decent map. Uh, now let me go ahead and save the... Um, since it no longer has the colors, I do want to save that. Okay. Jupiter... I, actually, I don't think it's going to be any nicer than that. I think it's actually going to be worse because... It moves very, it's going to do like several loops in the next, well, 10 years, actually, maybe not, actually. Well, let's find out. I was just trying to kill time and hope it would come up. Okay. And Jupiter should not be in red. That is a mistake. Okay. All right. So we've learned a few things here. One is, while this program will plot as much as you want, I mean, and to, to within some sort of reason, um... It's really kind of confusing because, well, actually, this isn't that confusing. Partly because I'm also only putting on years when there are, um, the idea is you give the year every three months, which totally destroys it. Um, and the month, so this is actually April 15th of 2023. And the other thing, of course, is this is a huge image. Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay. So we do need to make some changes here. Um, one possibility would be to not print the date at all, uh, which might work. Not honestly for this one. Oh, I think we decided. Let's. I'm just bored. I'm gonna do Saturn just for fun. Um, of course, Saturn will move less in the ten-year period than Jupiter. Uh, Uranus would move even less. I don't know if I'm gonna do it though. This is actually pretty nice. I mean, there's these like very, almost very consistent loops of retrograde motion. Although you will notice that over time, Saturn is moving further south of the ecliptic. Um, I don't know when its, ascending, when its descending node was. Um, probably sometime this year. So what we can do here, but obviously we want to look at this in a way better... Um, um, I'm going to 
better give it a shot and see if we can find Saturn's descending node and if it is sometime this year. Um, as my diagram. And okay. This is astrology, but we should get the, um, so it says April 30th of 2019, so I'm actually kind of curious now, um, if we can see that. To me, it looked like it would cross it this year, but I mean, it's kind of, it's a little bit tight there. Okay, let's see what Saturn was doing back in uh, 2019. Wait, what? Okay, um... Actually, this is not cool. When did they say it was happening? October 19th or something? April 30th. So this is... I mean, if they're using the same definition, this is actually not that close. Hmm... I'm not sure whether to worry or not, because we are comparing against a, um, against an astrology site. Let me see if I can do this. This should, this should break it. Yeah, that broke it. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and go on to the next uh, thing we were going to do. Uh, maybe or not. I don't care. Um, yeah, the next question is, what if we wanted to make this image bigger? How much bigger could we make this image? Because um, if we want to tile, the best way to tile is to create a really large image and tile from it um, to avoid overlapping word breaks and all this, this crap. So let's see how big of an image we can create with there's going to be some issues here. One of them is going to be um, that my I might not be able to display that many pixels. So let's crank this up and see if we can create an image that's this big. Uh, I'm almost sure we're going to segmentation fault here. Or to be honest, I think display won't even... Motherfucker. Oh my fucking god. Okay. Um, we can't look at it, but I mean, you know, it's, that's kind of selfish of us. Um, you know the weird things, I think, if we can actually create the image. Um... I think GIMP will open it. Um, I mean, display won't. I mean, it will. I don't have GIMP installed. So let me go ahead and install GIMP. GIMP is pretty good about showing large images. Um, the browser might actually be able to show it as well. So actually, I'm going to try that in just a second. Well, actually, I can try it right now. Uh, so let me do this. Firefox file temp big. And, no. Well, I mean, the, th the hell was that? It does 
doesn't look like it's working. Um, let me actually go over here and use the other thing. I, I don't think this is working, though. I get the feeling we are not... We're not looking at the image. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just not going to do it. Unless the image is all black and I screwed up somehow. And that, that's always a possibility. Um, okay. It's Gimptastic. I'll just say nice things about Gimp until we're, it's loading up here. Don't get it installed, and then um, yeah, I keep forgetting one possibility is that I've actually not created the image correctly, because um, Fly does have its limits as well. Um, and I, I I know I once tried to create a really really large image, and something biffed on it. I think it was Display that biffed on it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead, and, go ahead and install all that crap. Alright. So now, let's Gimpify. This should kill my memory, by the way. Even on the... Uh, this is a VM, but the main... Okay. Well... Now, for the coup de grace, as they do not say, I think I can change the view to be... Uh, let's just let me play it safe first. No, 1 to 16 first. Okay, so we can see... I mean, it doesn't look very good, but we can actually see some stuff in there. Uh, let's go ahead and go all the way up to, um, 1 to 8. Not looking too good, actually, at 1 to 8. Okay. Let's keep the focus here and go to 1 to 4. So it, it clearly does have stuff in it. Let's go one to one. This is actually not bad. I, this I like this image view. as an image viewer, which it's not even supposed to be that. This isn't bad. I think every fifth. Uh, dot, I make it a little bit more emphasized. So that's like every five hours you're seeing that little little bit more emphasized there. Okay. That's not bad. 2.7 gigabytes, which I think is not it's not its actual size. Because if you look at its actual size, it's smaller than that. But I think that's the amount of memory it has to take to display it. So it's only 630,000 bytes. Okay. So let's... Let's note that down in a little stream thing. Um, and GIMP can view it. But we're not satisfied with that, are we? I, I sound like uh, Mike Levy on the Made Some Discoveries. Can we make it... This actually is going to make it, by the way, 16 times bigger. And by the way, do notice that we're not actually making a square image here because um, I guess we could actually, I think. But anyway, um, let's see what this motherfucker does. Uh, this really might crash fly. Now, what's vaguely interesting is the number of lit pixels isn't going to change. Uh, the number of total pixels will change by a lot. Uh, it's going to be 16 times as big. That was me whistling. 
So the, the, the actual size is not too, uh, it's, you know, the size on disk. Okay. I'm kind of curious to see how many pixels this is. That is 5 gigapixels. That's not too bad at all. I kind of feel like it's a bit wimpy now. Now, at some point, I might just stop doing this because it takes forever to open images that, that are this size. And the only reason we're creating them is so we can create a tile set um, without having to worry about tiles getting cut off if they're rendered or if they're created individually. Um, so, so there is, there is that. Um, and I don't know if this is quite ready for prime time because I'd really like to be kind of more clear on like maybe if we're going to print out every day or you know the month the the day the date every month like every month we print the first of the month we print out may the month and maybe the 15th of the month we do that too and then we just print the day number for the rest of them and we don't even bother to print the hour numbers because we assume people can just sort of assume we assume people can just sort of look at that and say oh it's between the second and the third uh, but again, that that is something we need to decide on. All right, let's see if we can go make this motherfucker. Um, this is really going to toast the memory on my main machine. Um, because this is a VM, and ultimately, all right, we've got it so busy that it's lost its um, it's lost its frame redraw. It hasn't gone around to doing that. Uh, I'm going to give it a few more seconds. We might have to kill this artificially. I mean, this is... We're doing terrible things here. Uh, and... And let's give it till the... Oh, wow! Even the machine slowed that down. The time the timestamp slowed down. And the, the clock actually stopped for a second. Let's give it until the top of the minute here, and then we will kill this. In fact, at this point, I'm kind of worried that my stream is slowing down because of this. OBS is probably having some issues. Um, although OBS says it's fine. A lying piece of crap? No, I don't know. Oh, wow. Okay. So now... This is... Motherfucker. What's amazing here is that these lines have been drawn. Holy shit. These lines have been drawn by, by Fly. They're not. Um, the fact that they're working at all is kind of amazing. Um, I'm impressed anyway. Let's go ahead and. Let's go ahead and watch what happens when you seriously overload a system's memory. Let me, I can kill it from I can kill it from here. Now the real reason we're creating images um, GIMP is not dying nicely, which I kind of understand. I don't want to P kill minus nine you GIMP. I don't want to, but I'm gonna have to because you are totally fried. All right, we'll we'll kill you gently a thousand times. Uh, th this usually goes faster, but I think Gimp is having some issues. All right, I regret it has come to this, my friend. Wow. Okay, it's dead. This is not an IP address, by the way. Um, I don't know what the hell it is. I think it might be... Oh, time. It's a timestamp. Um, okay. But the real reason we're creating these huge files is so we can tile out of them. So the actual question is, I do have a tiling program that uses, uh, that uses image magic. Um, the question is, can a tiling program be used on an image this big. If it can't, we're not actually, it doesn't, act, we're not actually, it doesn't actually help us any. 
So let me see if I can find the tiling program, because I know I've used it before. Um, but of course, I have no idea where anything... I'm, oh, hello. Um, oddly enough, I don't think these are the programs that do this. Um, well, this tells you exactly what's going on, but this is the actually the... Um, this is for OSM. I'm going to guess this is for OSM 2. Um, let me... That, assuming to mostly copy from my tile, get peanuts. Um, yeah, I, I get the feeling this is not going to be at the top level. I mean, it might not be anywhere. I might be imagining it. But if it does exist, it won't exist at this. Ah, here it is. I actually did this for Dink, believe it or not. And wow. Yep. I remember this. Um, why is there a file called 3am.txt? Wow, I have no idea what the hell... Dink is the name of the game. It's actually a very nice game, too. Um, and I once got obsessed with it. Um, and created a... Um, and created, a lot, did a lot of stuff with it, actually. Okay. I always get worried about stuff like, oh, no, no, no. This is, this is actually part of Dig. Um, one of these, and I, let's, it might be create tiles. All right, Pomodoro, that was quick. Pomodoro time, back in two and two. Okay, we are almost back, and we're back. So this is clearly not the one I'm looking for. I think it's map to GMAP or something, because uh, back in those days, I wasn't using Leaflet. I think I actually got around to it eventually. Um, Create slippy style tiles. Um, kind of wonder what Dink Dat is now. And I think I saw one in the subder. No? Whoa. It seems like the worst possible file. Maybe there's more... I think the, the map file is probably the one I actually want. Or maybe it's not. I have no freaking idea. Okay. 
Unfortunately, I, oh, image map. This this is, I don't know why the hell it's inside here, but. Wow, this is very specific. Um. Okay, let's do make screen. Jesus Christ. I don't even think this is pro code. Given a pro freaking what the hell? All right, I'm I'm totally confused now. I have no idea what the hell I was doing back then. I still don't. Given pro keyword. Um. Oh my god. So apparently at some point I bothered to learn this. Right, I'm going to have to check to see how um, the network is doing. This is going too slow even for... Um, even allowing for the fact that I'm, I'm streaming and broadcasting. So please stand by. Um, okay. I, I'm not, I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to see what this... Oh yeah, Justin TV. So apparently all the traffic is really where it needs to be. Um, but okay, let's take a look at this bizarre thing that I discovered. Um, wow. Wow. Why the hell did I use that? That's... Very, very bad portability there. Okay. All right, let's see what the fuck I'm... Really have no idea what the hell I'm doing here. Oh, oh, here, here we go. Um... Right. I know one of these uses uh, a cropping function. Oh, here it is. Um, wow, okay. So that's, I don't even know why I bothered with that. Um, so the idea here is we do a um, convert crop and I'll just do uh, like a big chunk of the top left here. And actually I'll do a big chunk of one chunk in just to, just to show how clever I am. Um, and now the real question is, will Convert be able to handle this given the size of Big 2, which I believe we discovered earlier is 5 gigabytes, which isn't really that bad. So I'm... Um, so one problem we're having here is this is taking way too long to create a single file. Um, so, so even if this works, it's, it, it's frozen. Nice. <laughs> okay, so it did work, but it took for freaking ever. Cool, <laughs> it actually did work. Um, okay. Now, the other way to do this, uh, I think we can do what's called montage. I said it like it's French. Montage. Mon, mon, Monta what? Montage. Oh, I don't know what the hell that word is. Okay. It, oh, I did the wrong one. Um, cool. Yeah, here we are. Okay, something's going on here. I Hopefully it's not affecting my stream, just the chat, but it is being a little bit weird. 
keeps welcoming back to chat. Maybe because I'm getting disconnected because I'm fucking with the um, fucking with this too much. Um, let's see. Okay. I think I can do this and I don't need to give a tile param. Oh, I do actually. Um, so we're doing 200. So I'm going to say tile eat. Um, no, montage might do the the opposite of what I want. Montage might take smaller images, and I think that's, yeah, sorry. Yep, 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 yep. Montage does the opposite. Um, uh, I need the opposite of montage. Montage. God damn it, I can't pronounce that word anymore. Um, I think this will do this. Okay. Um, there's a lot. Convert, identify, mogrify, composite, montage. I was hoping it would tell me compare, stream, uh, display, animate, import, conjure. Jesus Christ. Um, okay. Let me go ahead and go to, to our good friend Google. Uh, image magic opposite of montage. And that's right there. So the idea is how do we get our little... We do like multi-cropping all at once. Really, really someone's sucking up my bandwidth. And I, I'm getting, I'm guessing it might just be because a lot of people are at home now. Um, interesting. All right, hang on one second here while I try to find these guys are not using up too much bandwidth, though. Um, yeah, let me. Let me quickly see who this is. I think this is all just Justin T. Oh, wow. <sighs> hmm. Anyway. I do not like the fact that my... Oh, shit. I'm going to MTR something real quick. MTR is Matt's trace route. And I want to see if we're getting packet losses here. We do not appear to be getting packet losses. Things appear to be pretty smooth. Um, so maybe... Okay, so web content usually means one of these tiles is killing me. Um... Multi-crop. Ooh. Now, the guy who came up with this answer... This is like one of those insane things where... Wow! I answered it. Um... Wow. I, I've basically become recursive now. I, I no longer know what I've already done. So let me go ahead and crop down my wonderful answer here. And this will do all the crops at once, if, if it works, which we are somewhat hesitant that it will work. But, um, but if it does, fantastic. Um, because that does all the work. Let's see who the hell is talking to me now. Um, altitude. Why am I getting plus 20? I'm awesome, apparently. I'm awesome, and this is taking forever. Um, Is 
That is not cool. That is very not cool. All right, let's let's fuck with this. I'm gonna p kill web content, although I get the feeling it's gonna destroy. Oh, that's what that was, chat. Oh, that was that was kind of a stupid thing to kill. Um, let's let's see if we can kill something that doesn't break everything I'm doing. Firefox. I mean. I realize this is a VM, so this technically isn't doing what it's supposed to do. I'm going to go ahead and run this on my main machine. But again, I don't think anything is really... I mean, OBS, VirtualBox, but I need those to run what I'm doing. Uh, I don't think anything else is really killing it. So I don't know what's going on today. Um, I, I really don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not happy. Why are we getting a bad network connection from this? Oh, cool. That also broke that. Um, so this is basically some guy. Uh, um, I mean, the biggest amount of traffic I'm seeing, and I know you can't see what I'm doing, is basically between... Me and Justin TV, which is of course, uh, which is of course, uh, that's how I stream. Justin TV is another name for uh, oh, um, the thing I'm using, the thing I can't, whose name I can't remember. Twitch. It's another name for Twitch. It's an old name for Twitch. Um, yeah. Let me do a Matt's trace route to that. Maybe there's a uh, something down between me and Twitch, which means it's kind of amazing that we're getting this at all. Nope, it looks beautiful. Okay. Um. So I was going to look to see what my, um. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and bookmark this. I'm kind of interested in that. What, what did I, what wonderful things happened to me? Um. Okay. So I've done some good answering. I'm good. Okay. Um, well, it does look like things might be a little bit faster now. But anyway, so now the question is, of course, will this let me do this with a really huge image? And if it will, we're in really pretty good shape, actually. If it won't, then we will have to go to some... Um, we will have to go to another... Uh, be a little bit nice here and do this in our own directory, which we are going to definitely have to erase this stuff. Okay. And if this works, this is fantastic, because this means we can create a really huge image and just crop it. Uh, we don't even have to look at the image, is the really sort of nice thing. Um, in this image, I think we said is like 256,000 pixels wide. And also the machine is frozen now. Good. Um, the fact that it, the fact that it's actually still responding at all. Okay, yeah. So this is 260. We could make it bigger, uh, obviously. The question, nope, nothing has happened yet. So the, the, the problem here is that image magic might try to load the whole image at once. Um, which we don't want. And by the way, if we're doing 1024 by 768, let me see how many images we're going to get. Roughly, because of the, the width and the... We're getting at about 7,000 images, so that's uh, what we're looking forward to here. And again, of course, because this is um, on an SSHFS mount, probably wasn't a great idea. The temp big 2 is actually not on the mount. It's actually on this, quote-unquote, on this machine. Um, but the images are going to be created on a um, on a mounted drive. So let's see what this is. This is not, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this. So I'm gonna try running it on my other machine. 
because at some point you really do have to um, at some point you really do have to kind of give some consideration to speed so this is convert um, oh I don't have temp bg2 do I okay hang on big two to we'll copy it over here down it'll be available on the main machine um, so convert I know you can't see what I'm doing. It's okay. I'm just going to test this out here. And then what was it? Crop, repage, add join. Let's add join. Uh, I want to make sure I get this. No, plus repage, plus add join. And that, that prevents it from putting any gaps in it, I think, is what we're trying to do here. Uh, image, and then we need a, 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 a spec. Zero two is not going to be enough. Let's do zero seven. Okay. All right, it's now running on the other machine, where it'll probably screw things up nicely. Um, and and that'll be that. Um, so I guess the next the next issue here is going to be. Um, mapper so it's useful to map let's say 100 years or maybe we'll be for mars that stuff um and and it can be bad i'm a little bit i'm going back and forth between my machine and this because i kind of want to see if it actually works Extremely high. Like is gonna take the whole image and and chomp it up, which means there's the possibility of a run. All right, cursor is frozen.